Okay, let's review this. We got to the factor theorem. So, what is the factor theorem? What do we put? What you got, Andrea? Factor theorem is what? What is it? What'd you put down? Factor theorem. There we go. It is a factor if and only if. That's a big deal. There are no remainders. No remainders. Okay, now we got to talk about remainders. We did. This is where we left off. So it's a factor if and only if there's no remainders. Now let's go to the remainder part. Right here. Okay, your remainder. Look at this graph right here. Go ahead. Okay, this graph right here is a picture of this polynomial. So this polynomial, let's give it a name. What's the name of it? What degree is it? Degree, this is degree 5. The biggest exponent is 5. So to the fundamental theorem of algebra, how many solutions is it going to have? So there's going to be 5 solutions. So it's degree 5. What about the name? Monomial, binomial, trinomial? What is this? How many terms are there? So there's 4 terms. 1, 2, 3. What's the name if it's got 4 terms? Degree 5. Yeah, there's no name. Just polynomial. Polynomial. So that's the name of it. Degree 5 polynomial. We know since this is degree 5, there's going to be 5 solutions. Now look. It's G for... Brittany. G for what? What's the name of it? Gene. Alright, this is Gene right here. So this function describes Gene. Now... His name's Gene. We're going to abbreviate. We're going to use G of X. So check this out. Here's what they want you to find. We're going to do it two ways. They want you to find Gene at a negative 1. So they want you to take negative 1. And they want you to put it in place of that X. In place of that X in place of that x and in place of that x now looking at a picture is super 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 easy so hey here's what we're going to do you can find the x-axis this is the x-axis right here let's find x is a negative one so on the x line negative one's right here yeah so negative one you're looking for where this crosses the line and it crosses the line right there probably pretty close to there so gene if you plug a negative one into the x at gene it's gonna spit out a negative six cool with that now let's let's do it into the function let's do it algebraically so here's the way you do you got to replace all these x's with the negative 1. So g, negative 1, 4, instead of x, where there's an x, put parentheses. And put a negative 1 there. And then put 5. That's your x, 1 plus 2 times negative 1 cubed. Plus, parentheses, negative 1 squared minus 1. Okay. You got to do exponents first. What's the negative one times itself five times? What's negative one times negative one times negative one times negative one times negative one? It's gonna be a negative one. So what's four times a negative one? If you times that by four, what's the negative one times four? Negative four. Okay, let's do the next piece. What's a negative one three times? What's a negative one times negative one times negative one? It's negative or positive? 
and then you got to times it by 2. So what's 2 times a negative 1? So that's a negative 2. What's a negative 1 2 times? What's negative 1 times negative 1? Positive or negative? It's positive 1. And then you've got a negative 1. And what's a positive 1 and a negative 1? 0. So what's a negative 4 and a negative 2? Negative 6. So which way was easier? The pitcher or the algebra? Yeah, the pitcher's way easy. So the pitcher, if you've got a pitcher and they want you to find gene at a negative 1, you just plug a negative 1 into the X line and find out where they cross. Okay, now this is a big deal. Negative 6, circle it, circle it, circle it. Remember it, remember it. Negative 6, circle it, remember it. It's a big, big deal. Next slide. Okay, here's the type of question you're good at. Is x plus 1 a factor of this? Now, this is the same polynomial. This is your degree 5 polynomial. The same picture that we just looked at. So, how do you tell if this is a factor? What was your factor theorem? It's a factor if and only if what? There's no remainders. So, tell me if there's a remainder. Let me pause it. Give you some time. Okay. Just look at x. What are you going to times x by to turn it into 4x to the 5th? So, I'm going to try and turn it into this. So, I'm going to times it by 4 x to the fourth now you gotta times it 4x to the fourth times x is 4x to the fifth and you gotta times it also to the one so that's just 4x to the fourth now you gotta minus it change the sign on both of them change that to a minus change that to a minus that will be zero and if you add these that's a minus 4x to the 4th. Bring your next piece down. Plus 2x cubes. Okay, now what can I times x by to turn it into just the first one? The 4x to the 4th. Minus 4x cubed. Now you times it. Minus 4x cubed times 4 is a minus 4x to the 4th. Awesome. Minus 4x cubed times 1 is a minus 4x cubed. But now, you've got to minus it. You've got to change the signs. That will change to a positive, and that will change to a positive. So, these zero out, and these add to be 6 cubes, and bring down your next piece. Your next piece is a plus 1x squared. And what can you times x by to turn it into 6 cubes? You're going to times it by 6x squared. So 6x squared times x is 6x cubed. And 6x squared times 1 is 6x squared. But now... Change the signs. Change that to a minus. Change that to a minus. That is 0. And that is a minus 5x squared. Oosh, this is long. Okay, bring down the next one. The next one is 0x's. So times x by a minus 5x. And that'll turn it into minus 5x squared. So times the minus 5x to the x. That's a minus 5x squared times the minus 5x to 1. And that's minus 5x. And then change that to a plus. Change that to a plus. Those zero out. And 0x's plus 5x's is... Now I'm out of room going to come up here. 5x's. Then bring down my next piece. My last piece of minus 1. Okay, what can I times x by to turn it into 5x's?
5. 5 times x is 5x, but you got to times the 5 to the 1, and that is plus 5. Now the most important part, you got to minus them. Change that to a minus, and change that to a minus. So what's a minus 5 and a minus 1? Your remainder should be a minus 6. What's so big deal about a minus 6? That's what we found on the previous slide. So look, your remainder is a minus 6. Look what we found right here. We found Gene at a negative 1 was a minus 6 on the graph, and it was a minus 6 here. Minus 6, minus 6, minus 6, minus 6, minus 6. Richard, this was Gene at a negative 1. What did we divide this by? You divide it by x plus 1. So here's the question. What is the difference? What's the relationship between dividing by x plus 1 and gene at a negative 1? So can I erase this stuff? So look, this is a big deal. Which one was easier? Dividing by x plus 1 or finding gene at a negative 1? Gene is the name of this function. So this function is a degree 5 polynomial. The graph looks like this. It's kind of curvy. That's just the name of the function. It describes how something's growing or shrinking or changing. And since it's called G, G is short for gene. And we named it gene. So now, Richard, here's what you got to know. Because that's what Brittany's the best naming functions, so we let her name it. She chose Gene. Richard, dividing by x plus 1 or finding g at a negative 1. Which one was easier? Finding g of a negative 1 is much easier. To find the remainder. This way was way easier. Especially if you're looking at a graph. So now look. You remember this. Dividing by x plus 1. Or finding g at a negative 1. So let's look at this guy right here. Here's your polynomial. Okay, this one's not so big. This one. Give me the name of this polynomial. Martin, what's the name of this one right here? What's the degree? What's the number of terms? Degree 2. What's degree 2? It's degree 2 trinomial. But what do we call degree 2? It's got a name. Degree 2. That's all we did last year. You learned the blank formula. X equals A to B. Plus. It's quadratic. Okay, it's quadratic trinomial. That's the name of it. Trinomial. Okay, so here we go. You're going to divide it by x minus 3. Is x minus 3 a factor? x minus 3 is a factor only if... What, Aiden? It's a factor if... And goes in even with no remainder. So find it. See if there's a remainder. Okay. X times uh, 3X. No. Minus 3X. Because a minus 3X times X is a minus 3X squared. A minus 3X times a minus 3 is a plus 9X. Dang it. Now, change the signs. Change that to a plus. Change that to a minus. So, these should be minus 4x. Bring down the 4 times x by a minus 4. And a minus 4 times x is a minus 4x. But a minus 4 times a minus 3 is a plus 12 
And now you got to change the signs. Change that to a plus. Change that to a minus. That is... Ooh, Aiden. That's you. Remainder's negative eight. Nice. Okay, now, hey, Seuss, we want to convince you that this way is easier. Check this out. We want to do the Aaron. So, if you're dividing by x minus 3, and this is f. Brittany, what did you say the name of this function is? Fern? So this is function fern. Look at function fern. Function fern. If you're dividing fern by x minus 3, what do we got to evaluate fern at? Let's try fern at what? Fern at 3. If you're dividing by x minus 3, you're going to do fern at 3. They're always opposite. Got that? If you're dividing by x minus 3, I do fern at 3. So now this is going to be faster, easier. Here we go. You're going to take fern, which was a minus 3x squared plus 5x plus plus 4. It was a quadratic trinomial. You are going to take 3 and you are going to substitute it in place of that x and in place of that x. So it's going to be a minus 3 parenthesis parenthesis squared plus 5 parenthesis plus 4. Now Jesus, anywhere there's an x, wrap it in parentheses and you will not ever miss it. Now you got to put a 3 there and you got to put a 3 there. And if you type this in exactly as it is on the calculator, hit enter, it'll spit out minus 8. So you got to do 3 squared. You got to do exponents first. This should be a minus 3 times 9. Plus 5 times 3 is 15. Plus 4. A minus 3 times 9 is a minus 27. And a 15 and a 4 is a plus 19. And a minus 27 plus 19 equals a minus 8. Faster, easier, better, stronger. Okay, look at this guy right here. So if you got to explain the remainder theorem in words, what's the remainder theorem? What's the remainder theorem? What are we going to put, Haley? Uh, everyone does. What's the remainder theorem? What? It's a factor if there's no remainders. So what if there is a remainder? It's not a factor. So here we go. Write this down. When divide by let's choose let's make up an example when dividing by what if you're dividing by x plus 6 if you're dividing by x plus 6 try what should we try instead of doing the long division let's try evaluating the function at a negative 6. Or it would be something like this. F of negative 6 instead. Because it is faster and it gives you the same remainder. So if you're dividing by x plus 6, what about if dividing by what if you're dividing by x plus 10 what would you do then what would you try you would try f at a negative 10 there we go okay